Welcome to the Isaac Show. Oh, it's incredible to be here again with every single person. Amazing. How has the week been for you? Um, how is um, work? How is life? Um, it's so amazing to be here again. Um, welcome again to the Isaac Show, where we basically showcase the inspiring stories of um, disruptive and innovative African entrepreneurs, you know, creators, you know, and disruptors. Um, welcome Adorables by Mylar. Welcome Fion. Welcome Bolatito. Oh, welcome everybody. Amazing to have you here. Um, yeah, today's going to be interesting. Um, today's going to be fun. I can assure you of that. Interesting. Um, and of course, you would get to know that very soon. Um, but once again, I would just like to reiterate that the simple essence of this show is to actually challenge um, consumers to become producers, right? To mm -hmm. challenge ordinary people to become extraordinary people. Why? Because it's very simple. Success is replicable. Greatness is replicable. Okay, so if you've seen anyone achieve anything, you can do exactly the same and possibly more uniquely in your own unique way. You know, and that's why we bring on amazing guys to share their stories. All right. So today we'll be having someone very special. Um, her name is mm -hmm. Miriam. Miriam Adebola Salami. You know, um, she's the CEO of uh, Mo Baby Care. Um, okay, I think she's here now. Um, I'm bringing her on right away. Mm -hmm. More and more interesting, more and more engaging, more and more awesome. Um, I'm looking forward to having a fun time today, actually, because Miriam is a very fun, <laughs> she's a very fun human being, very fun individual. Uh -huh. So she's here now. Hello. <laughs> What's up? Where have you been? We have been looking and searching for you everywhere. It was my network. Oh, my what happened to your network? I'm so sorry. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm... I have to wear my shades because I'm shy. <laughs> Why shall you shy? <laughs> and you know, the first, oh my God. The first time you told you me that I'm very well. I'm doing, I'm doing amazing. Um, the first time you told me you are shy, so you think I would really. I'll really buy that. Uh, <laughs> I think I'd really buy that. Um, um, Cause I think I think you're you're actually one of the very few fearless ladies, or should I say, women out there that I that I've encountered for real. You know. Um, so if you're shy, you just you just want to make yourself believe that you're shy. Anyway, welcome to the Isaac Show, uh, Miriam. It's good to have you here. And thanks for all that you do. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, we decided to talk to you and speak with you because um, your story actually re resonates with a lot of people, like millions of Nigerians and Africans can resonate distinctly with your story. You have, um, you have a very, very unique and compelling story um, that I believe that uh, people beyond the scope of this platform um, I personally will be looking to share, you know, as as much as I possibly can. Um, can. Um, um, it's um, it's not to make you feel. Um, it's not just to make you feel good, but because I know that there are many people um, uh, who's launching out is actually launching launching out of their ideas would be actually dependent, you know, on stories like yours. You know, so welcome once again to the show. All right. So basically, um, before we go into it, I'll Quickly, I'll quickly go through um, Miriam's profile um, so that we can kickstart this ASAP. So Miriam is a founder and lead formulator at Mo Baby Care, a baby-specific um, all-natural skin and hair care solution company. You know, um, she's very passionate about women and children contributing to United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and she created the made woman initiative to help women create and live a sustainable life an innovative entrepreneur with a first degree in zoology <laughs> and we'll get to talk about that and over 70 years 
of leadership experience in the IT fashion manufacturing industries. She started off as an administrative manager at Amazon Limited. Afterwards, she transitioned into a seasoned production manager um, and then lead designer at Made Creations and Designs, an award-winning designer fit for brides and children, proud to founding MobibCare. She's a member of the Yali Network and was recently awarded by the Mocha Limited in conjunction with um, assessing grants for startups, AGS, tribe for our excellence in managing and teaching work-life balance, right? Um, more baby care, of course, for our excellent business idea, um, she also recently concluded an incubation program with the Orange Corners Nigeria um, in collaboration with the Kingdom of Netherlands and has also been selected for the Enterprise Development um, Center for the Road to Growth Incubation Program sponsored by the Cherry Blair Foundation for Women, ExxonMobil and World Bank. Welcome once again, Miriam Adebola Salami. Thank Welcome. you for let's, me. Let's, 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 oh. let's roll the drums. Okay, so let's get straight into, into it. Um, you are into the child care um, industry. You basically run, um, um, by the way, the name of your, I think the name of your company is very, very unique, Mobibi Care. I don't know how that name came to be. Maybe that should be the first question. Yeah, how did you come about that name? Okay, so um, more baby care started from people just asking me, what do I do for my daughter? Especially a lot of people who knew what I had and what her skin is to be like. So, you know, I share my pictures, my family, but so a lot of people see that there have been changes and they kept asking what have you been using and all of that. So I, I gave parents it out for about a year. And suddenly someone said she needed this soap in particular. And I'm like, oh, I'm so busy because I just have my soap. Can you hear me clearly? Absolutely. I can hear you clearly. I'm sure we can hear you clearly. So I just had my son then. I was still trying to get a hang of with a toddler and a baby. A baby. And she was like, I desperately need it. She also just had a second child and she had been using what I recommended before for her first child. And she was like, she desperately needed it and all of that. She would even pay me. So I put up the conversation on my private page on this Insta story and WhatsApp. And I'm like, ah, would you guys really pay for me to do new skincare solutions for your children? Mind you, I only had just soap, the black soap and the shea butter mix. I didn't even have a name or anything. I didn't have any idea that I wanted to draw a skincare brand because I was doing very well in my fashion. And the response that they was so amazed, like everybody kept saying, I'll pay, I'll watch. I'm like, I was I, I think I just said two K each for the soap and then for the cream. I didn't get better use. Where did you ask the question? Where was it online or in the class? On Insta story, on Insta story, and my WhatsApp story. So I think I had about forty people vote yes, and then on WhatsApp, a lot of comments came in yes, please will buy. And I'm like, if I did it for two k would you guys buy? The response was still yes. So the next wow. day, that that happened to be on the fourth of March. So the okay. next day. I put up a story that, okay, oh, if you're going to buy this, they have to be a name. Let's come up with a name. And wow. you know, I, I come, my, <laughs> my nickname is Mo, from Moran Keji. My, my son has a Mo name. My daughter has a Mo name. My husband is Mo. And, you know, my wedding hashtag was the Mo. And everybody kept coming up with names with the Mo and everything. So I said, okay, there has to be, uh, apart from it being my name or my family name, there has yeah. to be another meaning to it. So I started researching other languages and meanings with Mo. And so I came up with Mo Baby Care, method of baby care. Simple. So, and that was how we came up. It, 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 was, it was the social cloud that came up with that name, but I had to find a meaning to it. That's okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Wow, wow. All right. So now let's, 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 um, Let's go back a little bit. Um, as I saw in your profile, your profile that um, you worked as a as a um, a production manager somewhere before Mo Baby Care, right? Can you quickly take yeah. us through your employee experience, employee life before Mo Baby Care came on board? What was life like before Mo Baby Care? Okay, so um, I 
what did you do prior to that? Okay, I've always been very hands-on with business. Uh, I can tell you that I completely have over 15 years of experience running different businesses. However, when I was in the university, I didn't used to buy clothes because I, 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 I'm, I'm a Lagos babe, I'm an island babe. And on the island, you grow on the island, you know that you have access to endless tailors who can make you replica of anything you find online. So I'm used to that lifestyle, even to t-shirts, corporate shirts, suits, and all those things you wear to school. I was used to sewing them. And people would be like, where do you buy them? And I'm like, I don't buy them, I make them. So they always contrast those things to me. And I used to give it out to a certain tailor I found in Lauren. This man had a very big fashion house. But yeah. you know, they're in Lauren. They really have good clients that are willing to pay. And yeah. he also didn't have access to quality fabric. I have access to quality fabric. So I took him to Lagos. I, I didn't know. I didn't take a weekend trip. He actually stepped in my parents' house. They didn't understand what was going on because this man is well older than I am. He's probably old enough to be my dad. And I brought him from Lori and I'm like, I just called my mom. Tell me, somebody stopped us wow. because we are going to spend the night. He's going to go to so this man said he wanted to pay me for that. And I said, no, you can't pay me one off. Employ me. Let me manage your production needs. Let me teach your tailors how to move from fabric cutting to the tailoring aspect, design to the finish, and to make sure that your yeah. customers had a good experience. I didn't know what I was doing there was production management. I just knew I, 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 I outlined it. Like, I actually drew an outline in it for him. And he liked it. So I'll go to school in the morning. I used to start with classes with law. That's why I didn't come out to first time. So I like money. I'll go to any lecture that happens between one after one PM. I'm not getting things because I have to go to work. So I managed his production house for about three years. And that was when I decided that because I'm going to be graduating soon, I needed to have my own fashion business coming back to Lagos. And, you know, a lot of people didn't even know. A lot of people who saw me in that space felt like I owned that space because I owned it for him. And we still talk to today. So I helped him. I even directed him to his school to learn proper fashion business and all of that. So that was how I became a fashion a production So why did, you, why did you leave, why did you leave um, that particular... Why did you leave his, his business? Why did you leave? Okay, so like I said, I didn't think I wanted to do movie weekend. I was doing my fashion business fine. The business was fine. But the impact it had on my personal life was not fine. Mm. I am an student when it comes to giving solutions. And fashion business in Nigeria is very like very fast dealing with people. In as much as yeah. I had this education in people management and all of that, I found out that you probably need an extra PhD to deal with people in Nigeria. And yeah. so it started to affect me mentally because I wasn't able to give the hundred percent that I promised my customers. Yeah. And because I needed to choose between being the actual designer or the actual tailor or you know the person communicating with the customer or the person who manages production or fabric selection and all of that. I couldn't just do that anymore. And I have yeah. done that business for about seven, eight years. Yeah. Post university. And I, I I didn't know what I wanted to do next. In fact, I put out my CV. I got a job offer around the time I had my son. I told them I had I just had a son because they were impressed with my presentation and everything. They gave me three months. They wanted me to resume in March, which was when I started moving. Wow. The company offered me, you know, they offered me really good pay and everything in Ikeja, very close to where I live. I you know they offered yes. for my son. You know, everything was just really nice. I could have taken the job and I would still probably come out really nice out of it and I was still yeah. doing it right now. But yeah. you know, when I saw the cry of everybody who responded to that startup that they would buy whatever I produced from them at mm. any price, even though mm. at that time I didn't know what I was doing, I had no certification at all. I had no prior knowledge of skin science. I didn't exactly. understand why babies come up. You know, you are new from the group. Why are you coming up with different skin issues? What happened inside the group? You know, I didn't understand all those things. But people were ready to buy the solution. 
And again, I, I had to think about that. Why did I leave a paid job in the first place to focus on fashion 100 percent Because I actually worked for about three years while running my fashion business. And that's where you see that I worked in an IT company as an email yeah. resource manager. Yeah. I, 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 I realized that the reason I did that was because I'm a family person. I like to work where I'm able to still see my kids at any time, however I want to. I want to be comfortable. I want to be yeah. able to wear my shorts and singlet and do the hot work and work in cycle market, do the sun work and everything. So at that time, more baby care was an, was not the next thing for me. It was just an escape from not being satisfied satisfied mm. with fashion business. And mm. I knew that to be able to get satisfaction I needed, I needed to take a break. But of course, mm. I didn't want to just take a break and just stay at home. Already I was already at home. I had my kids within the space of 13 months. So I was already at home for too long. I just needed an escape. So the fashion business was on hold. I rented a warehouse, put everything I used inside, paid my staff three months, I had allowance, and told them that they can get a job or wait for me to start, whatever. But I didn't want it to feel like I didn't let them go because my own mental state was not stable. It was an escape. And that escape yeah. became something that I can never ever run away from. Okay. Awesome. 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 I I I, I find this really, really interesting. So it was a personal challenge that led to the discovery of a general challenge that people were also having. Yeah. And then you saw that and then you put up a status and you saw that people were interested and were willing to pay for this value. Okay, for this problem that you were able to solve for yourself, you know, and then eventually for them okay so that's how more baby care started now let's go let's now dive basically in so of course um what i would say you found at that point was a validation you found validation that okay this is a workable solution like there's market for this thing oh man i'm wanting this so from at that point and from that point what exactly did you do Okay, you know, I said the first, okay, so that's the, you know, obviously, social media poll, everybody will say yes, 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 until you drop your account number. Yes, exactly, so, I guess. Okay. When I eventually <laughs> dropped an account number, I had five clients, and that was about 20,000 naira. Wow. I didn't even know where I was going to get plastic. I just used, I eat a lot, so I had a lot of plastics at home from salad and everything. So I just used all of that and made it. And so I, 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 took, I did a, I did a remote and a remote. You know, I had my kids back to back, and it was not funny at all. It was really, really stressful for me. It's not something I advise anyone to do, especially my first daughter. Apart from her going through a lot of skin issues, I labored her for seventy-two hours, and. It left my mental state in a mess and it almost affected my marriage in a very bad way. Mm -hmm. So, one thing that got me out of it was that I ordered something for pay baby space. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention brand names. And she sent me a note that day. I think I bought a walk or something. I can't remember what I bought. And she sent okay. me a note with a really nice phrase of something that really helped me that day. Like, it helped me feel good. I look, I, I went to the bathroom, took a shower, scrubbed, did a makeup. Wow. And my husband came back and I was pregnant. I was pregnant with my son then. And I, even me, I didn't understand. So when it was time for me to, step, to do the service delivery for a month, you know, five months, I knew that putting an handwritten note was going to go a long way. And that was why. And all of them put it on social media, you know, they put it on social media saying, oh my God, I've never gotten a personalized note in my life. It's not Valentine. And more baby care sent them. And more baby at that time, it was just more baby on the Sent me this personalized note. Do you know what I wow. took from that thing? It wasn't yeah. the comment. I felt sad that I can somebody be saying I did something nice with a, with a lined paper. And the plastic is looking this horrible. Mm. It won't happen again. So mm. I went into super graphic designing, designed a nice logo that is not so nice now, but then it looked nice. You know, stickers, chose colors. 
You know, I knew at that moment that I, I, I love social media a lot. I'm always on social media. Yeah, and obviously. I knew that I wanted my brand to stand out at any time. So the next thing, you know, I have not even gone into the proper formulation or understanding the product itself. The first yeah. thing I went to do was my brand representation. I like to mm. hype myself a lot. So when I hype myself, I want people to be able to see that, oh, it's what they do. So I went into proper brand representation, looked at prospective competitive markets at that time. What were they doing differently? Why are people spending? Like, I would not, at that time, I would not buy a soap of 2009. I didn't used to buy it. I, I didn't understand why people bought a soap I gave them for 2000. And I wonder, I knew that I wouldn't be the only one asking that question. Other people will be asking that question. So I wanted to give them a response from the moment they see my Instagram page or my flyer or anything. I went yeah. all out. I spent a lot of money on branding. And then I went on now say, okay, now this branding has attracted, attracted them. It has given them a reason for the pricing or for the whole life. What would keep them yeah. coming back? It is the product itself. Yeah. You know? So I went on to ask around people who were already in the business, where can I learn from in Nigeria? Who can I learn from? I'm sure I learned from over 15 people. Wow. Because exactly. I didn't know what I was doing. So I kept paying for coffee. I kept paying for coffee. And that's what I told people. You cannot just say you have a solution. Whatever solution you have, trust me, you are not Jesus. <laughs> Whatever Jesus gave to us, a part of it had been done by prophets that came before him. That's to tell you yeah. that nothing is new in this life. But yeah. what makes it new is the product, um, the solution the product give, how it delivers the, product, the solution, and the sustainability of that solution itself. So I kept learning. Yeah. No, even at the beginning of some courses, I was like, oh, and I've learned this thing, so, so, so But I'll still go through to the end to see what's special about this course. So I practically paid for about 15 courses before I now decided to really? learn internationally. Yes, I did. So I found a, a globally certified school for organic formulations. I learned. I, after that Amazing. course, I think I did another word that I've not finished. And I went ahead again to say that I wanted to become a school scientist because I didn't just want to formulate the solution. I wanted to be able to understand the problem. So from, from getting the idea, from getting onto getting validated, you need to also research on your solution. Um, sustainability and how you can do that is to learn and keep learning about it. So you know, I have done branding. I have I have certified my um, formulation. The next thing is to keep the customer, which was marketing or customers or customer experience. Yeah, customer experience came naturally to me. Hi. So customer experience okay. came naturally to me because, you know, I'm a mom. So I know how I feel when I want to buy something for my children. And yeah. if you don't treat me well, I make me feel. And if you treat me well, I make me feel. So I went to learn a lot of, because um, I went, I also trained on customer service. It was just me. And I knew that at that time, I couldn't afford extra hands. So I kept investing in myself. So yeah. I went to train on customer experience. I also did a lot of marketing um, um, strategies and everything. And that is where it comes about that people just see me everywhere. They feel like this guy has time. I have mm. a I have a I have a vision. And if if my vision, I'm just two years old. Imagine me competing with a company that is 60 years old or 50 years old in the market. You have yeah. to always be on the road. Yeah. So I'm yeah. everywhere. Yeah. I have taken almost all the courses you can think about. When it comes to marketing, I have done almost all the forms of different marketing strategies. I have seen the online courses to see which one best fits my product. I have, you know, I have tried and tested different coaches just to be able to, you know, 
keep improving on myself and to always give the best. And that is why we've been able to do so much in just two years. We've changed our branding four times in two years. That's to tell you that wow. I'm testing for for perfection. I'm testing for customer satisfaction. I'm not just mm. looking at the money. Of course, I like money. I love money. I want to make money. But then, yeah. the only way to continue to make money is to continue to give solutions. People are in need of solutions. And a country like ours, where we have over 200 million people, and you have just 10,000 followers on your Instagram, you have never even scratched something. So you have to keep keep on innovating, keep on trying things that can work for your business and all of that. Whoa, interesting, interesting, interesting. Like, um, this is like practically like a mini MBA course, right? So, we're gonna have to charge our viewers, right? So, um, <laughs> the, 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 the interesting thing I find with your story is that the more it progresses, the more lessons there are to pick out from it, you know, especially from the point of the idea validation. You posted it, you Something worked for you. You tried the products. You came up with the products. It worked for you, or the solution it worked for you. You posted it. People loved it. They wanted it. They, you saw interest, and then you delved into it. Okay, that's level one. So that's um, um I mean, I find a lesson in that. Something works for you. That could be a market. That could be something. That could be God telling you something that okay, this is. I mean, this is. There's a market here. Okay, but it didn't stop. It didn't stop at that. Uh, you took it further by going into doing what branding, you know, and that talks about the power of branding. So a lot of people have ideas, but um, um, the idea almost always remains the way they got it, okay, because it doesn't progress from how it was gotten. So um, you see a lesson about branding there. And then furthermore, you spoke about taking courses, and I, I, I call that reinvestment, you know. So the lesson there is, so you start making little money here and there, or you make your first one million naira, and then you go buy a brand new car. I mean, of course, it, I mean, how many brand, how many cars can you even buy brand new as one million naira? But you go buy a car, and then and then the car begins to serve the money you should reinvest in your business to make it bigger. Okay, you know, uh, so you started investing, you took courses and all of that. Yeah. So now I want us to go into the nitty gritty of how you actually put systems and structures in place. You know. Um, around your business, right? Um, and of course, I also want you to talk about, uh, okay, well, there's something that, 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 there was something that happened between you and I, or oh, one of these days that we were together that you probably didn't notice, and then it was, um, I found it quite instructive. I think we were, we were driving back from one of these Orange Corners um, um, lectures then, and then we got to, was it when you now? And then you showed me a particular building where you grew up. <laughs> where you grew up. And then, um, and that was not enough. You actually opened your mouth and told me by yourself that, man, this was where you grew up or that you were living, practically living on the streets. Wow. That was, that was infectious for me. Like, I, I didn't say anything, but it was very infectious. Number one, it was infectious because, um, Yes, you grew up in that area and then look at what you've done with your, with your life and for other people. Uh, because at the end of the day, um, your business is not only making you a living, it's also putting food on other people's table. You know, then secondly, the fact that you were confident enough to actually say to, I mean, you were not ashamed of your story. Yeah, that is the fact that you are not ashamed of your, because I've seen a few guys that, okay, that have that kind of story and then they, they just don't want to go there. You know, they just want you to see only what is, what is available now, even after having, you know, surpassed the past. So I want you to talk about growing up in that area. What do you think that did to you or for you before we talk about the systems Okay, <laughs> it will be mm -hmm. says she remembers. Yeah, you know. So yeah, what do you yeah. think? <laughs> what do you think that's true? What do you think? Um, um, because sincerely, like I can relate, you know, and that's <laughs> very that Yeah. So, what do you think that period actually mm -hmm. did for you? What do you think? You, you, I mean, I mean, there are lessons that you think work against you or it worked for you, and how exactly do you think that has helped or influenced you? I would, I would say it worked against me. I, I, I was born in Oneo. That was not even where I was living, but where I showed you was like a better version of 
where I was yes. in the first I was born in Orile, like the core, the core part of Orile where they are smoking here, they are drinking there, wow. and all of that. And then I used to spend the holidays with my grandmother in Mushin. Okay. So, and I worked in Mushin for about five years. Because anytime we go there, my grandmother believed that you have to work for your own feeding. Hmm. It wasn't that. They didn't have enough money. To, my grandpa owned, owned a bakery. So even if we didn't have food, I think we should be able to have bread every day, you know. And my grandmother <laughs> is still of food. But for you to get yeah. food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you have to go and sell something, come back with money, and get a, a, like a, a, a daily wage. So I yeah. grew up plucking fruits on trees to go and sell. Yeah. I grew up tying up water wow. in nylons to go and sell. And wow. Wow. I never for once felt like I was suffering because I was enjoying it. You know, wow. we were we were always plenty, it was competition, who sold the most water, who plucked the most fruit. Because if you plucked the most fruit, obviously you would make the most money, you know. And <laughs> me I, I don't know. My my parents are entrepreneurs. So my father is a my father is a rude, like he's a street man. He not street as in he's on the streets all the time. He didn't yeah. go to school, but he got into places that people who had BSc and MSc at that he time got into because mm -hmm. he, he could sell himself at any time and at anywhere. You know, my dad would tell you something that even with the children we'll be looking at ourselves, we don't have that. Too. But that person is telling us both the story already. So I think I got wow. my sweet mouth talking and storytelling from my dad. And then I got resilience from my mom. She's never tired. She's always working. She still works at this time. She's always trying to make money. She's always, you know, and they taught us to be very contented. And even at that time, we had people wearing it as well as we were doing. So and I, we were very religious while growing up. So we learned a lot about, you know, being grateful and all those things. So at that time, even now, I didn't think I suffered or I went through something that nobody should go through. For one, I think I'm very grateful I went through those experiences. And it has helped me to get into places that people cannot get into because I'm, I'm not afraid. I'm not shy. I'm not ashamed. I talk about my stories and my storytelling has gotten me into places that even I don't believe. I think I win a lot of funding and opportunities because of my storytelling. I think I get a lot of sponsorship and support because of my storytelling. I think this billboard thing that went up, I just got, I, I've gotten like two more opportunities. Since it went up on Tuesday. It's not even up to a week. Because wow. of how I shared the story of how I used to look at that church and I used to talk about how one day, as in, I, I literally remember saying one day, my picture, I, I didn't know it was going to be my picture because I wanted to run for Nigeria. So I used to say that one day, my picture is going to be on this and everybody would stand and they'll be looking at me. I didn't even remember, it was my mom who remembered that I said it. And I'm like, ah, see how God just works in ways that you don't even know. I can't enter a relay now and people will not know me. So there was one time I did a program for Always and Nokia. And I told them that they wanted to crowd, let's go there. I went there, I was able to talk street language and, you know, just converse in ways that people, they were like, ah, you this is more like, you know? Oh, no, I <laughs> you know, you have difficulties <laughs> that people are just calming down and, you know, they can, they can now listen to you and all of that. So, mm -hmm. it has really helped me and I don't see it as, I don't see it as anything that shouldn't have happened. I'm, I'm actually grateful. If I had grown up in well-organized areas, I think it would have limited my way of being impulsive because I'm very impulsive. I'm very rational. I'm, I'm very rational about things, but still impulsive in such a way that I can decide that today I want to do this. And you will be like, you don't even have the resources. But because I know that I have lived with far less resources and I have come out with it, it's still... I don't know. I'll never be ashamed of my story. And I think anyone who is watching this should never, regardless, should never be ashamed of their story. I shared my story when I was trying to conceive. And it really helped us conceive faster. Because a lot of people have suggestions, doctors they've used, 
hospitals we think I can use, medications I can try. And yeah. what doctors told me would not happen in five years happened in less than five years. Because I was able to have a community of people who were going through that. And because of that, over 47 moms from that community actually had their own children after me. Mm. Even now that I'm not running that community anymore, people are doing it and they keep coming to me and they're like, ha, ah, this is community that you just started. Even though you are not there, do you know that people are still taking lessons from each other and are conceiving and all of that? I also yeah. talk about how my daughter is sickle cell and you don't even want to know what I've gotten from that. Mm. It's not always about money. Sometimes, because you can't discuss some things with your family, like my parents don't know, and, you know, when we are having to deal with crises or illness and all those things, yeah, I feel comforted because there are other people out there who are going through And then they'll tell you, oh, I've been used this. And you're like, ah, my doctor didn't recommend it. And then I'm calling my doctor, why are you not recommending this for us? Okay, let's mm-hmm. try it. You know, because I am sharing my story, I'm able to live more. I'm able to, you know, get more responses in real time yeah. than someone who is not sharing their story. Yeah, there is. I, mm. I, I think I got awarded in NYC by Governor Fashla then because of my story. Wow. And I know wow. that I'm going to get on world class platforms because of my story. Oh, you know, story. Okay, so, why are people so not sharing their story? I'm sitting up for these rewards for other people who might be going through the same issue. Yeah. I, I don't mean you, don't, you have to put it on social media, but I'm saying that even amongst friends, even amongst communities. In fact, people will just be there. They're not selling themselves. They're not seeking out yeah. opportunities to people grow and even attract more things. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So talk about, talk about, of course, so the next lesson for us here is never ever be afraid to share your story. I'll add something to that. Irrespective of your background or circumstances, never be afraid or shy or intimidated to share your story. So talking about sharing your story, would you say, I find that, um, of course, that's one of, your, one, of, one of the things you really do well. How would you say you, you learned these parts? You know, I mean, did, did, you, did, you have to go, did you have to go for a course at a particular time of storytelling or, do you, or, or is it completely natural? You know, what helps you to share your story the way you do effortlessly and also almost naturally? Okay, you know I mentioned my dad is a is a rogue. <laughs> I like yeah. to say rogue in code, but my dad is a talker yeah. too. And he doesn't talk nonsense. And growing up, I realized that when I'm talking, people enjoy it, but sometimes I drink from people's and things. So I needed to learn how to talk and still make sense while saying it. So I, I enrolled from for a communication, uh, I can't remember the name of the course. It was just about, you know, being able to put together your thoughts and your stories to then yeah. develop an out, output. But then, yeah. to now we talk about my story to get opportunities of funding or scholarship. I learned that from the AJS tribe. I attended a master's um, grant writing master class sometime last year where I was able to, you know, learn how to constructively put your story together to interest people. And so I've been leveraging on that thing then. So, so in so in a nutshell, like if you were to give just two points, you know, summarize the two points, what you know about storytelling, what would you say? I mean, for for people out there who, who want to tell stories, and you know, uh, almost naturally like you do, what would you say are the top two tips that they should take away to be great storytellers like you? I think you should you should be original. Don't sugarcoat anything, and you should understand your audience. That's basically it. be original and understand the person who is listening to you so that you know which approach that comes first and which goes next. Great. Now let's now delve into the meat of the matter. So uh we're back on, on the movie Be Care story. So um of course we we were we left it where you were talking about investing, you took courses, you invested in the business, of course, and I see this evidently um, even from the from what I know about you, you know, um, and of course this has paid off significantly, you know. Uh, I saw you won um um, a grant from the Ubi Franklin grants. I saw you, I've seen, you know, several opportunities that have come, of course, the AJS tribe, you know, 
you know, we read some of these stories and I'm like, wow, I'm, this is amazing. Like, this is some, someone doing something from nothing. Like, that's what it means to do something practically from nothing. I watch it grow and grow and grow just by leveraging the power of authenticity and storytelling. So, um, of course, but we also know that um, it's not enough to tell stories. You also want to build a business that has systems and structures, you know, to the point um, where gradually things are able to work um, independent of you, the founder. So how would you say you've been doing this, uh, especially after taking those courses, you know, now, I mean, you're, you're almost two years, you know, so um, uh, especially, you know, um, frankly speaking now, especially for one or two people half there who are watching now or who would watch later, who may be in future or now inspired to start something in the line of the business that you do and who are looking for a worthy model to emulate. What would you, so, so what would you say have been the manner and the way in which you have actually put systems and structures in place in your business here? Okay, so you know I have experience in human resource management and when I, I, knew, yeah. I knew that even as a, even when I worked as a fashion designer, when I owned a fashion brand, I had yeah. one tenant, and each of them had their different rules. And I've worked in like corporate companies, and I know that you should have department. But when I said I was a retail, I couldn't afford, and that's why I'm coming down to that level. I couldn't afford to have different departments or anything. So what I did was I had a I had an organ with them, and it's our department. So. Monday was for, let's say, customer service. Tuesday, accounting. Wednesday was for marketing. Thursday could be for sales and administration. Friday would be, you know, I had it in days. And that's a, a secret that you, you should not forget or you should make sure you take notes of. I can't have all those departments, but I put them in days. So on Monday, I am doing sales and admin job. Or you could say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because sales and admin for my kind of business are supposed to be every day. Why yeah, yeah, about yeah. two or three days? Okay. So I was functioning in all those departments and I was creating documents for each, as in I had salary for those departments, even though I was not able to pay. But that salary was there. More baby is owing me and they started paying me small <laughs> Hopefully they will pay me before I they will finish paying me before I retire. You know? So I learned all those things, even though I, it was a one man's business. I had procurement yeah. departments. And so when I go yeah. to procure something, that means that day is for procurement. Yeah. And so as I for, for procurement, for example, as I went to start procuring raw materials and all those things. After yeah. about two months or three months of buying from a particular supplier, I didn't have to go yeah. there. I used the opportunity of logistics and delivery services. So they can deliver mm -hmm. to me. Even though I was buying just two doors, I, you have to be able to say, if I go there myself, I'm going to be spending the whole day or half of my day. I will also be spending cost on transportation. Why don't you just spend that and even less on, say, delivery bike or Uber? to deliver it to you and also another thing i also did was to get someone who was like a family to me to handle virtually so what the person does they help me attend to my instagram while i'm doing whatsapp or something you just have to okay. even though you don't so even right now we are about a team of seven and there is still department. Even though one person is handling about two or three departments we have those things in place for yeah, yeah. when we now grow to have 15 or 20, I have SOPs right now, standard of operation for departments that have not existed. Interesting. Because I am. Interesting. You need Interesting. to look at where you are going. Okay, so now um, I, I want us to.
Was it my network or your network? Hello, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Oh, okay. So I can hear Miriam, but she can't seem to hear me. I Miriam. can hear you now. Okay. So sorry for that um, interruption. I think I believe it's from my hand because um, I just saw that one of the connections I'm using actually went off. So I've switched to the other one now. Okay. Yes. So. You were basically talking about um, systems and structures. Let me go. Just go. I think we have we have about ten minutes left to go. Now, the purpose of the IT show is actually very simple. Um, the IT show will be a failure if after every episode, um, someone who wants to do something in the line of the person being interviewed is unable to actually replicate their story. Right. So I want to tell us basically. What's the process? I mean, what's the process of, I mean, take us through the process um, of your production from start to finish. Of course, just take us through it like um, in phases. How do you, you know, because all we see on Instagram is the finished products, you know. Meanwhile, I know that uh, there's a lot, a whole lot that go, <laughs> that go into those beautiful products that we see out there. So what we see is the finished products. And then we have a generation where, we just fall in love with consuming and buying those things. And then very few people are thinking about, okay, can I also produce something like this? You know? So what exactly, you know, and then, and then what we then do is that we look at these people that are producing it like as they have, as if they have 50 heads, you know? So just take us through. What it, it, <laughs> so what it takes to produce the more maybe care products from start to finish. Yeah. What's the process? So, we start with the product formulation. So the product formulation is a standard table where you have what you want to produce, how many how many you need, and what you need. So what you need yeah. comes in percentages or grams or however you are it. So you know that comes from the raw material and to the packaging to the labels and everything. So when you have this table, you can. I always prefer to start with that. To have this table, you can see at a glance what you need to procure. So when you have all of this, it goes on to then preparing these raw materials and the package. So when it comes into the store, we take inventory of it and hand it to the system. So we can see what exactly, how much exactly we bought it and where we bought it from, so we move and all of that. So the receipt and everything is locked. And okay, so we go on to you know storing it. When you store it, there are different ways to store your raw materials and your package. So you do that and then you move on to the production process. So the main production process has a pre-production time where you make sure that your space is disinfected, is well spacious, there is no hazard anywhere and all those things. When all that is in place, you then disinfect all your production materials from the machines to the, you know, bowls and you know the spatulas and all of that so yeah. that we test your raw material okay. upon reception upon receiving all raw material we test it but you know you, are, you might not be producing on that same day and something might have happened between when you got it and when you want to it. so we test yeah. the raw material again everything is fine you do your measurements and then in most eating or grinding or you know different processes just do that 
and then you come up with your final product and test it again. Because after adding different things together, anything can go wrong in between. Even human yeah. thoughts can happen in between. So we test so it. There's a machine and then between this testing, right? So there's a there's a there's a machine with which you do this testing, right? The testing of the product. No. So there are different testing. Okay. You can outsource your testing to a product lab. Okay, where okay. we have license which we test yeah. our product with them. The kind of testing yeah. I mean is your preservative okay, is the pH balance, because you know this we are dealing with the skin, there's a certain pH level the product has to be. So you can test if it's too high, you adjust, if it's too low, you yeah. add something to it. So that's the kind yeah. of testing I'm talking about. But as we grow, because we don't do because of this, we don't buy our raw materials in bulk so that we don't have to do spoilage and all those things. We still buy yeah. them in batches that we need. However, every quarter, we test our product in a, in a, in a physical lab yeah. to, to make sure that our products are well standardized. And that's what got us our NAFTA approval. So, because our products are well standardized, we are approved for NAFTA. And so we can sell our products confidently and comfortably at any way. We are also pediatrician and by, um, um, certified. We have over seven pediatricians that have tested and tried our products. We wow. have five dermatologists that have tested our products in the US, in Canada, in UK, and in Nigeria. Five So you can comfortably use our products. And these are the things that just came off my head. Like I said, even though we are just two years, we are dealing with every single product as though we are already put in the market because Absolutely. we are a global brand. We want to be able to, be, to compete with any product in the market as long as we can afford to compete with them. Awesome. So when you put your product in the packaging, you double it and that's ready and to sell. Again. Start making awesome. all the noise. Okay. <laughs> So I want to talk briefly about the NAFDAQ um, registry. I mean, your NAF, I mean, more baby care is guys, more baby care is officially NAFDAQ certified, you know. So of course, I, I have a, you know, let's, as a let's roll, <laughs> let's it's let's roll. Know, man. <laughs> Congratulations once again. That's 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 a massive um, achievement. I tell you, because um, I know I know a couple of larger firms you know, who are still struggling to get this done, right? You know, um, and I also have very few, very And I have to tell you that storytelling actually got me NAFDAQ certified. How? When NAFDAQ came to my factory, my factory is not, the size was not compatible with what, what they wanted. But by the time I told them the story and where I was going, they didn't have wow. a choice. Mm. So, they have a choice. So, storytelling can get you anywhere. Amazing. Amazing. That's, I mean, you've answered the question, so I do not have to ask anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about, okay, of course, what about, I mean, of course, I see your view, we see your billboard now, you know, across, you know, Africa, you know, this is everywhere. Kenya. <laughs> You know, but seriously, I mean, that's that's some that's some uh, millions of naira you'll be spending if you were to pay for that um, for that billboard ad, which you got for free. So, how did that really happen? Briefly, we have a few minutes to go before I ask you the final. I question. did pay for it. Um, there was a competition. Was it a competition? I don't know. An entry to apply for SME innovation uh, intervention by Elevate Media. I saw it and. I think I, I, I posted mine last week. Okay. I just posted it. I just posted it and wrote one short caption. I slept and I woke up and I'm like, who's doing you? Are you normal? You need to give it to them. You know, make me pay. So you need to, I think maybe I should I will share the story again. So I okay. did the caption and wrote the story the way it's done. And okay. before before the day they even announced the the final is yeah they followed me they sent me a mail and they were like they like my brand and 
they would really like to work with me, even though I didn't win. Trust me, at that time, I just started feeling comfortable with myself that even though I don't win, something, something will come out of this post at least. So the whole thing went back to storytelling again. I told a compelling story. And I shared it, you know, interesting so stuff that they could not just not share that Post. They shared the post and a lot of people liked it and I guess amazing. selected. Okay, amazing. It's it's I must say it's been it's been awesome, interesting chatting with you. But before uh, you go, I would like to ask you this very important question. Yes, so Mobile started about two years ago. Uh and so far so good, you've run a very good race. You know, I must say well done, Miriam. Well done and well done and thank you for inspiring other Nigerian ladies, women to follow their dreams. Right. So now for you personally as founder of Mobivike, what is the future Mobivike that you see 10, 15 years um to this time? How do you see Mobivike? What would be happening? I think, I think I'm confident that in another 10 years, more baby care is going to be the reference point for baby care products. Come to skincare products, hair care products, household baby care products, diapering, mess cleansers, you know, anything that has to do with baby care. Extending from skin and hair to other things that you need for your children, more baby care is going to be the reference point. And it's not like it's not it's not just a vision. You, we are already living that vision. Every month we are doing something different from what we were doing last week. This month we are launching a new product by this week, and by the end of this year, we would have increased our products. When we started this year, this year we started with 18 products. By the end of this year, we'll be adding 17 products. So, and it's not just about just churning out products. We are increasing users. We have in, we have service over 2,000 families with an average of two child per family. So you can already see that we have 15 distributors already worldwide. And with another customer, we are going into the world. So we are going to be the reference point. A reference point is the point that even if you are not mobile, what baby is going to be a reason why we would be using African brand? Amazing. Because you want to be sure that you are associating your child's health with an own brand. Amazing. All right. So parting word, there's one woman out there who has an idea like we did two years ago, um, who believes in that idea, but who's just who has too many negative thoughts, you know, and doubts about launching house. What would you say to that woman in closing? It won't be a word. Sorry, <laughs> I'm a talkative. It won't be <laughs> Go a word. I've told you the number of things I've tried and failed at. Even though I don't like to say I failed in my fashion business, but it was still a failure because we didn't get to the peak of the future. But guess what? Even though I did that for eight years, I'm doing something now and it's barely three, let's say two years, and we are doing amazingly well. I would never, nobody would have, if anybody had shown me that that's what you would be doing, I still wouldn't believe them. But you know what gets you to that point? It's by taking a step. If you are going on a 40-story building, and that's, you don't have a choice but to go on that 40-story building. If you take yourself 40 years to start, you will still have to do that 40-story building. But the good thing is, if you start now, and take a break, start now, take a break, start now, the fact that you don't stop, don't stop, no matter your gender, whether you are a female or male, whether you are married or not, whether you are rich, well, you had my background, I didn't come from, nobody's coming from anywhere. You can do anything, anything at all, you can do it, and you should start now, because your children are actually watching you. Awesome. All right. So thank you so, so, so very much, um, Miriam. And congrats. So congratulations on the NAMDAP registration.